Greetings dear viewers, welcome. Today's poem is Splendid Stainets. This is a poem about the first world chess champion, Wilhelm Stainets. Wilhelm Stainets became the world champion in 1886 and he was the world champion till 1894 um, after which Emmanuel Lasker became the world champion. Now there are a lot of things about Stainets life and chess which are interesting and I have picked out few moments which are worthy uh, of uh, being told. The first thing that I want to speak about Stainitz is his chess style. Initially, when Stainitz started out, uh, he was just like all the players of their generation, trying to involve in great attacks and trying to throw the pieces into the opponent's territory, trying to checkmate. But later, uh, towards a large part of the 1870s, Steinitz entered into a positional style wherein he felt that it is not always necessary to indulge in unnecessary attack but it is also important to capitalize on opponent's weakness and try to be a little more cautious and it did earn him a lot of success he was considered as the pioneer of the positional chess now uh, we can see a whole crop of positional players but we can say that Steinitz started this revolution in the uh, 1880s other than that, to talk about Stainitz's achievement to chess, he was a prolific writer. He contributed a lot through his uh, articles. And the other thing about Stainitz, which is very different to other writers, is that he always stood by what he wrote. In the sense, there were certain uh, people who were not necessarily happy with what Stainitz wrote, but Stainitz was ready to enter a war. And that's why it was called as the Ink War, when he used to give replies through his writing. And a lot of them appreciated the fact that Stainitz possessed very good English and a great writing skill, not just the chess skill. Then, the other thing uh, is about Stainitz's decision to move away from the competitive chess. Uh, towards the later part of uh, 1870s, Stainitz refrained. For uh, around six years, he did not participate in any competitive chess, but he indulged himself in simultaneous display, blindfold display, and he was very successful in amassing quite, quite a good amount of money. And a lot of people, that is why Wittingly remarked, saying that he came, he did not see he conquered. He did not see in the sense he gave a lot of blindfold displays even at that time. That was his ability and that is why a lot of people uh, appreciated Stainitz's achievements and the fact that he was so successful in giving out this displays, especially blindfolded. There are other things about Stainitz that one may um, talk. Uh, I want to talk about his later years of his life. Personal life, it was very difficult for Wilhelm Stainitz. Uh, in the sense, he had a lot of mental issues. A uh, large part of his later life was spent in mental asylum. And he claimed to play chess with God as well. Um, so it was quite a difficult time for Stainitz personally one can say. And the other thing about Wilhelm Steinitz uh, is the fact that a lot of the players, even today, the oppositional players, uh, consider Steinitz as a very good theoretician. Uh, I want to quote Vladimir Kramnik here. Vladimir Kramnik uh, said, appreciated William Steinitz, saying that he was able to uh, recognize that there are principles uh, in this particular game and the fact that he was able to do it at that particular time when chess was in its, its uh, infant years, we can say, was something which is worthy of appreciation. Steinitz does just uh, did live uh, uh, a legacy and we can uh, indeed call uh, Steinitz as uh, splendid Steinitz. So this is a poem about all these uh, particular important uh, details, uh, aspects about his life, which I found to be quite interesting. So let us get started with the poem. You were born into a family of tailors. While you fail to thread a cloth, you weave masterpieces on the board, which for eternity will be stored. You were the first official world champion, possessing indomitable grit, powered by fighting spirit, with a style so cautious, devoid of major flaws. You stress the importance of calculated attack, 
rather than throwing all of your bag. Stressing on the importance of valuation, creating the plan and its implementation. Six years, you refrain from competitions, indulging in simultaneous exhibitions. Your extraordinary blind chess displays set a remarkable place. It was about this blind fee that many wittingly remarked, he came, he did not see, he conquered. A historian and chess journalist to, uh, who are there to his chess thoughts, daring enter ink wars to showcase your chess powers. Your final days was at the asylum, which has an aura of gloom. Your desire to play against God may make us nod with deep love and pain about a champion and his vein. Um, yes, it is ironic. We can say that um, a great champion who was able to manage his pieces so well was not able to manage his money well. He lived in poverty for a long duration and probably that might have contributed to his uh, mental illness as well. Nevertheless, we always uh, respect Stainitz. Majority of the chess players respect Stainitz and they, since of course he is the world's first official world chess champion, one needs to follow his path. Whatever chess champion, whoever it is, uh, who is, who is now the world champion, the champions that are going to come are going to be following in the footsteps of Stainitz whether they want to or they don't want to. I hope you like the poem. The full poem as usual is in the description and thank you for watching.